know. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. It was a scary situation for Bear County deputies early this morning as a suspect leads them on a chase and fires at them several times. We'll have details coming up. Serious allegations have Bear County Sheriff deputies speaking with students at one area school district where and what deputies are investigating. That's coming up. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 65 degrees to start your weekend morning. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. But for now, good morning. It is Saturday, March 5th. Guess what? What? This weekend, splash pads open back up. And I think... Are you excited about I'm that? excited because that kind of just means that the winter weather is like over. But oh. is it? But is oh. it? Are you speaking too soon, Max? Little Cue too soon. Sarah Spivey. Yeah, we're going to be warm all weekend long. But okay. We've got a double dose of cold fronts oh. in the next seven days to talk about. Yeah, so not ideal for folks who are out wanting to enjoy spring break outside, but it is March and we usually get some cold fronts this time of year anyway. All right, take a look outside with temperatures. A warm start to the day. We're at 65 degrees at the airport, 63 in Comfort, 62 in Kerrville, 62 in Bandera and 65 in Hondo. Also breezy winds are from the south at about 15 miles per hour, so at least we've got a bit of a breeze. And today, even though it's cloudy outside right now, we will see some sunshine in the afternoon. 80s for the high 82 in San Antonio tomorrow, even a little bit warmer after some morning drizzle. We'll see some afternoon sun and highs in the low to mid 80s as well. Cold front though arrives Sunday night into Monday morning. It does bring a chance for some rain and cools us down. We've got a lot to talk about in the forecast, including that second cold front in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, quite the situation for Bear County deputies early this morning after a suspect led them on a chase and then started shooting at them. Erica Hernandez is live downtown with more details. Erica, was anyone injured in this incident? Sarah, thankfully nobody was hit as this chase ensued. Now, this all started around 3 a.m. this morning. Now, according to Bear County Sheriff's Office, a vehicle leaving a hotel parking lot almost caused an accident. Deputies nearby witnessed the vehicle driving erratically and tried to initiate a traffic stop, but the vehicle took off. A chase then ensued down Culebra, and the driver of that vehicle began shooting at deputies. Even at one point, the driver pulled up to a deputy's unit and fired a shot through his door. The driver fired at deputies at least four different times before crashing on Sanisa and Morning Glory. The driver took off from the scene but was caught a short time later behind an apartment building. So there was also a woman in that vehicle with the suspect. She was taken in. No word if she'll be facing any charges. As for the suspect, he'll be facing numerous charges, including attempted capital murder of a peace officer. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Erica. Well, police tell us a woman now under arrest under suspicion for a DWI after being involved in a crash in far north Bear County. So take a look. This crash happened just after 1030 last night. This is 281 North and Summit Church Road. That's near TPC Parkway. Police on the scene telling us a woman was headed northbound on 281. She ran the red light, crashed into a white vehicle. Investigators say the impact pushed that white vehicle into a ditch. The driver of the vehicle had to be rescued. Police say that they had some cuts and bruises, all minor injuries, but the driver of the other vehicle who allegedly caused the crash was arrested. In top stories, a Somerset ISD community on high alert following the news of an allegation into investigation involving high school students sharing explicit images. Parents told case that on Friday after school had not the school had not been made aware of the investigation launched by the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The investigation started back on February 18th. Some inside the school who asked to remain anonymous said deputies met with the high school athletes a few weeks ago. The district said they are cooperating with investigators. A Dimmick County Sheriff's deputy now facing charges stemming from the same investigation that led to the arrest of the sheriff. So Sheriff Marion Boyd facing three charges. One of them involves tampering with evidence back on August 14th. Now we know Deputy Abraham Garza also facing a tampering with evidence charge stemming from the same day. Court documents show the situation circulated around an investigation into a crash. The tampering with physical evidence charge based on accusations that Deputy Garza concealed a 2020 GMC pickup truck quote unquote, with intent to impair its availability as evidence in any investigation or official proceeding. Now, KSAT 12 has reached out to DPS and the Sheriff's Department for further details. We have not heard back yet. 
Well, after years of back and forth, there is finally a new tentative deal between the city of San Antonio and San Antonio's police union. But the union says they're already getting plenty of questions from officers as to what this new deal means for them. So the plan limits how much power an arbitrator has to reinstate fired officers. It also gives the police chief more time to discipline an officer on a non-criminal issue. But it limits that to two years from when the incident happened. So officers would only have a 24 hour notice to show up to internal affairs for an investigation instead of 48 hours. And when it comes to pay, officers would see a raise during the length of their contract. The city says it would make SAPD officers the second highest paid force in the state after Austin PD. But is the pay enough? Well, I, I, look, I will tell you in, in uh in any business, it's never enough for anyone, right? Uh, but we look at, at being being uh, realistic. So what we looked at was uh, retention. We've had officers leave with five, six years on, uh, where before this was a career where you wanted to stay 30, 35 years. So what we looked at was we need to be able to do our part uh, also with the city and attracting uh, more employees. The police union still needs to review all the terms before proposing any changes or approving the deal. That's expected to happen by late April before it's sent to city council for review and possible approval. In your morning headlines, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky denouncing NATO after NATO refused to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. President Zelensky accusing NATO of creating the narrative that the closure of the sky would allegedly provoke a war with Russia. This as Russian President Vladimir Putin cracks down on media outlets and signing into law a bill that criminalizes the intentional spreading of what Moscow deems to be fake reports. ABC's Karina Mitchell has a story. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is criticizing NATO after the alliance refused to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. In an angry televised address, Zelensky called NATO weak and said the alliance would be to blame for any additional civilian deaths. Earlier, Secretary of State Antony Blinken defended NATO's decision, saying a no-fly zone could lead to NATO planes shooting down Russian planes and an even bigger conflict. We also have a responsibility, as the Secretary General said, to ensure that the war doesn't spill over even beyond Ukraine. Meantime, Russian forces continue their unrelenting bombardment of civilian areas. After an intense fight, Russian troops have taken control of a large nuclear power plant in southeastern Ukraine. A fire there led to fears of a potential nuclear disaster. But nuclear scientists say the fire is out and radiation levels are normal. Citizens and soldiers continue to prepare. ABC's Matt Gutman is in Lviv. What is that? A mine? These are mines. So they're, do they work still? Yeah. So this is to what, blow up Russian tanks? Yes. While Ukrainian men stay behind to fight as Ukraine's martial law requires, their wives and children are desperately seeking refuge in neighboring countries. In Russia, the Kremlin and parliament are now threatening reporters with prison time for spreading what they call fake news, potentially outlawing words like war or invasion. Western networks, including ABC, pulling out of Russia, not broadcasting from the country. The State Department condemning Russia's move, saying, quote, the people of Russia did not choose this war. Putin did. They have a right to know about the death, suffering and destruction being inflicted by their government on the people of Ukraine. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In other morning headlines, state police in Massachusetts investigating a crash after one of their own was killed by a semi-truck. So here's what we know. Authorities say Trooper Tamar Bucci stopped her cruiser to help a motorist in the emergency lane on I-93 in Massachusetts. A tanker truck slammed into her cruiser. The impact pushed her into a stone wall. Two Good Samaritans were driving by. They pulled the trooper out. She was rushed to the hospital. That's where she later died. Now the driver of the tanker, not injured, were cooperating with police. We are still waiting to learn what charges, if any, that driver will face. Two Marines in South Carolina are said to be doing fine after their fighter jet crashed. In a statement issued by the base, the pilots were conducting a routine flight when their aircraft went down in an unpopulated area near Marine Corps Air Station, Beaufort. No details were given to what led up to this crash. It stated both pilots safely ejected with no injuries and they are in stable condition. This crash is under investigation. And headed to California, road crews out there having to use explosives to clear out massive boulders in the result of a rock slide.
on Highway 50. So take a look. This was the scene yesterday. The slide happened at Echo Summit in El Dorado County. California Highway Patrol said no drivers were in the area when it happened. Both directions of the highway had been closed to allow crews to work. They were using drills, using explosives to remove some of these rocks. And afterward, they're going to be checking for road damage. Highway Patrol not given an estimated time for the reopenings of the road. Time now, 610, 65 degrees out. All right, Max, is there Cowboys drama? There's always Cowboys always drama. Cowboys uh, drama. Uh, so as you can see on the graphic on your screen, is this guy, is Mark Cooper going to be on the chopping block? We're going to explain it just a bit. Drama, 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 but I'm here for it. And I'm also here <laughs> for this warmer weather that's been sticking around. Sarah Spivey says it's going to stick around for a little bit, but cooler temps are in our future. She'll explain when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 613 this Saturday. Sarah, we're in March, and yeah. it feels like it. Heat and humidity this morning. I, I Absolutely. like it. I'm here for it. Yeah, we enjoy the warmer weather when the seasons are changing, right? It is going to be in the 80s all weekend long for us, Ooh. but a double dose of cold fronts in the week ahead. So we've got ups and downs. I would hold off on any kind of uh, spring planting until after next weekend because a light freeze could be possible over the next seven days. All right, take a look outside right now. We've got cloudy skies and it is very, very muggy out there. Dew points are in the low 60s and humidity is at 87 percent. It's 65 degrees, cloudy outside and winds are from the south at about 15 miles per hour. 62 in Kerrville, 64 in Del Rio, 64 in Uvalde, 64 in Hondo, uh, and 66 in New Braunfels. As I mentioned, we do have stout wind from the south and from the southeast at about 15 miles per hour. We've already seen wind gusts of up to 20 miles per hour earlier this morning, and these winds are just continuing to funnel in that Gulf moisture, and so that's why it is muggy outside. Dew points are in the 60s. That is uh, right where you can feel it, you feel that mugginess in the air and if it weren't for the winds we'd be looking at some areas of fog and drizzle as well but those winds are actually mixing up the atmosphere pretty well uh, by tomorrow morning though we could have some areas of drizzle all right take a look at the future cast these clouds are going to be stubborn today hanging on through about lunch and then after lunch into the afternoon we'll be seeing skies clear and looking at mostly sunny skies around san antonio one of the last places though that the skies will clear will be up in the hill country. And so as a result in the hill country today, temperatures should top off in the mid to upper 70s, whereas here in San Antonio will be in the low 80s across that I-35 corridor in the low 80s and then the mid 80s further out west toward Del Rio, 85 degrees Laredo going to be close to 90 this afternoon. So take a look at today's forecast just to summarize what I've been explaining in, in the morning here. We're going to stay cloudy right around noon. We'll be in the mid 70s and we'll start to see skies clear. And then in the afternoon, warm 82 degrees south winds at 10 to 15 gusting up to 25. Sun's going to set at 636 and it'll be mild tonight. Temperatures not falling off too much. We'll still be in the 60s by 10 PM. So no need for a jacket uh, today. Okay, on the satellite and radar, take a look at all the activity out to the west. Plenty of snowfall across the Rockies uh, and uh, parts of the Pacific Northwest. And this is our next system that's going to be moving through Sunday night into Monday morning. It's going to be bringing us a small opportunity for some rain, but it is going to drop those temperatures fairly quickly. So let me take you through the future cast again. More of the same tomorrow morning. We'll see some drizzle, some clouds. Those clouds will be stubborn, clearing in the afternoon and then we'll be at 83 tomorrow for the high. So just a degree warmer than today's forecast. Then that front is going to move through Sunday night. We're going to see some storms up near the Dallas Fort Worth area, some of which could be on the severe side and just a thin line of thunder showers out across the Edwards Plateau by uh, close to dawn on Monday. There will be a few showers out there, although most of us are not going to see any kind of healthy rain from this system. It's going to be very fast moving, passing thin line of showers and then throughout the day on Monday. 
our temperatures will fall into the 60s and into the 50s. So quite a difference from Sunday to Monday. We'll be looking at uh, a 20 plus degree temperature difference from Sunday into Monday with only that 30% chance for showers. Then on Tuesday, Tuesday is going to be a cool day. We're only going to be looking at highs in the 50s. By Wednesday and Thursday, though, feeling more spring breakish with highs in the 60s and 70s. And then uh, another cold front arrives. This one on uh, Friday. Friday morning, dropping our highs into the 50s and 60s. And I think by Saturday morning, we could have a light freeze. Uh, so uh, again, try to avoid any kind of spring planting or gardening until after this upcoming weekend, at least. I'm glad I just put all my flowers back into their <laughs> flower buds. <laughs> Sarah's <Light>. fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Light. Thank Thanks, you. Sarah. <laughs> 618, 65 degrees out. Where's Jerry Jones, Max? It is the question of the weekend. Cowboy owner, well, he was absent from his standing media session. We're going to explain why right after the break. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good morning and welcome back. An obvious absence at media session at the NFL Combine, which has been exhilarating to say the least. So Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones not there, and he cites medical issues. So that is according to the Dallas Cowboys. Jerry Jones, 79 years old, normally holds a media session at the start of the on-field workouts at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. But instead, he remained in Dallas to work through a medical issue. It was the day before that Jones appeared at a news conference at at and Stadium to promote the upcoming welterweight title fight, but not able to make it to the combine yesterday where he normally holds his session inside his luxury bus. So are the Dallas Cowboys, we didn't hear from Jerry, but I'm gonna ask the question, are they going to cut Amari Cooper before March 20th? That is when they have to guarantee his $20 million salary for this upcoming season. There is a report out that claims that's exactly what the Cowboys are going to do. According to ESPN, if the Cowboys cut Amari Cooper, he will only count $6 million against the Cowboys' salary cap instead of $22 million. So you save $16 million. And that way, they can sign a free agent like Michael Gallup, Cedric Wilson, and even Randy Gregory. Now, the move sounds crazy considering Dallas gave up a first-round pick to get Cooper from the Raiders and gave Dak a veteran target. Not to mention, Mark Cooper's been fantastic, but it kind of is an either-or situation, and you never know what Jerry is going to do. Money drama. Money drama always. But if you can save $16 million and, you know, get more three agents there you go more money more problems sure <laughs> 623 65 degrees out all right where you can get a free fruit tree today oh. that's coming up next good morning welcome back and happy weekend the ever popular fruit and nut tree giveaway it is happening today it's happening locally it's happening at texas a m university at san antonio the san antonio parks and rec department teaming up with the san antonio food bank to hope today host today's Jammin' Jam Tree Adoption Event. Some 600 fruit and nut trees, they're gonna be given away for free. This is a drive through event and only one tree will be given out per car. So if you're planning to pick up a free tree, make sure you go to parking lot B. The free tree adoption event is from 8 a.m. until noon or until supplies last. And we can't stress how popular this event is. So if you want a tree, you may want to arrive early and some bit of advice, like Sarah Spivey said, don't plant until after next weekend. So mm. keep those fruit trees in the pot, bring them inside if we do have that light freeze. Um, make sure you plant them and give them lots of water and sun, too. Yeah. I know the last two sold out at 10 a.m. Dang. Yeah. All right, 627, 65 degrees out. Well, coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, how you can help Texas parks and wildlife slow the spread of an invasive plant and fish in our area. Plus, San Antonio police investigating a suspect who hit a woman on the northwest side and kept driving. We're going to have the details straight ahead. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday. 6.30 this morning, March 5th. Heat and humidity today. Yeah, I'm did actually you, uh, feeling it. I'm feeling the humidity in the studio. Did you feel better, though? You didn't have to, like, bundle up, get the whole outfit going? I mean, I still wore my light fleece okay. because it's always very cold in the station, but actually feel the humidity. It's, hot it's kind right of now. warm today in the station as well. But it's like when it's, like, 65 degrees outside, mm -hmm. it's... I feel like it's almost warmer inside, and it's like mm, that weird. Do I turn? Do I turn the AC on or not? Yeah. You know, Sarah. Sarah Spivey. Yeah, turn it on. Turn it turn on. It on. <laughs> Absolutely, because it's going to be in the low to mid 80s this oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah. you're going to need the AC. But heads up, 
We're going to go up and down that temperature roller coaster in the week ahead for spring break. All right, let's take a look outside with live cam cloudy skies to start our day. No drizzle out there this morning, 65 and winds are from the south at about uh, 15 miles per hour. That wind is pretty stout. Uh, it's continuing to keep Gulf of Mexico humidity high around San Antonio. Relative humidity right now at 87% and the clouds today are going to be stubborn. We're really not going to see them start to clear until noon, a lot like yesterday and will be a couple of degrees warmer than yesterday to a high temperature right near 82 degrees winds from the south at 10 to 15 gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, this weekend we're going to be warm and muggy uh, morning clouds, afternoon sun. We do expect a cold front a Monday morning, and that'll start the trend of a seesaw spring break where we'll see temperatures go up and down all spring break long. So you're going to want to stay connected with the weather if you have outdoor plans for spring break this upcoming week. And of course, I'll give you the details, including rain chances in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for a driver responsible for a deadly hit and run crash. Erica Hernandez is joining us live with the details on this incident. So Erica, what kind of vehicle are police looking for? Sarah, this morning, police are searching for a silver vehicle. Again, there is no make or model that has been released yet, but this all happened, this accident, this deadly accident, right before 1 a.m. on Culebra Street. A man and woman were crossing the street when a silver vehicle traveling on the eastbound lanes hit the man. The woman was not hit. Now, that man was taken to University Hospital in critical condition, but died a short time after arriving. The driver of that silver vehicle did not stop to render aid, and so police are now searching for that person. Now, once that driver is caught, they will be facing several charges charges, including failure to stop and render aid, resulting in death. Again, this was a silver vehicle. No make or model have been released. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Erica. So if you're looking to get your COVID-19 vaccine or booster, Southside ISD can help you out. The school district is holding a COVID-19 clinic today that includes free eye exam. So this free clinic is being held from 9 this morning until noon at Southside's ACES cafeteria. That address 19190281 South. Organizers are offering families, especially with children, the COVID-19 vaccine, booster, and tests. On top of that, they're also offering free eye exams to check for eye disease and other vision problems. The event is free and open to all of San Antonio. In your business news, President Joe Biden was joined by the CEO of Simons USA to announce a $54 million investment plan to produce equipment for the electrical infrastructure here in the states. The investment would create 300 additional jobs at locations in California and right here in Texas. Biden is expected to announce details on a rule that would require companies that produce products for the government to have 75 percent of their product content made in the states. All right, is inflation about to hit your Costco membership fee? The Wholesale Club's chief financial officer says that an increase in membership prices is possible and not definitive. He said that decision has not been made yet. The last time Costco raided the fees were June of 2017, but the CFO says the increases have happened every five and a half years, so one could be on the way. Also, inflation still at the pump while you're out and about today. Keep in mind, gas is higher than it was a few days ago. So according to AAA, the average price in San Antonio right now is $3.45 a gallon. That's a 12 cent jump since Thursday. The White House says the U.S. is in the process of tapping into the country's reserves. AAA says they expect to see a bit of a slowdown, but are cautioning drivers not to expect prices to change dramatically. To help you stretch gas dollars even further, you can check out some tips on KSAT.com. So at one time, Kroger's was here in San Antonio, but has since pulled out. But the Grocers has announced plans that they're returning to the Alamo City. Here's the thing, though. The return, it's a little different. Don't expect to see their stores popping up. They're actually launching a grocery service. 12 on your sides of Marilyn Moritz explains this business model involves robots. This is not your grandmother's grocery. It's what Kroger is bringing to San Antonio after leaving the market nearly 30 years ago. Kroger is launching grocery delivery here, employing 160 people and a lot of robots. Is this the future of grocery shopping where robots pick up our Cheerios and we never even need to go to the store? 
Yes, it is part of the future of uh, grocery shopping and all shopping. Instead of stores, you'll see refrigerated trucks. It's all part of a network. Dallas, the area hub, with the San Antonio Spoke, a warehouse on the northeast side. You place your online order, and the orchestrated automation picks and bags it. People deliver to your doorstep. Not just Kroger, all the grocery retailers have learned that we need to be there for the customer wherever they want us to be. Dr. Venki Shankar with Texas A&M Center for Retail Studies says during the pandemic, grocers saw online business boom from about 4% of sales to 15 to 20%. And now shoppers expect to be able to shop when, where, and how they want. We are living in a world where you know, this has become a new normal. He says for the company, this business model can lower the cost of operating big stores, real estate, and labor. For customers, it's another option and convenience. As for a time frame for all of this, Kroger says later this year. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, charter schools are seemingly more and more popular. Local San Antonio school districts, they actually have a number of charter schools. In fact, SAISD has an entire section on their website devoted to in-district charter school programs. Over the course of the pandemic, a lot of parents have become more engaged in their children's education, and a lot of families have reevaluated their school choices. So if you're interested in the charter school program, or have, for that matter, if you have anyone in a charter school, how do you proceed? So tomorrow morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., the head of the San Antonio Charter Moms joining us live. We're going to be discussing a number of topics such as exploring options for your children, great tips on navigating, and researching, and even applying to local charter schools. So much more than that, too. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section at KSAT.com. Join us tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. for all the answers. Time now, 638, 65 degrees out. Amazing craft beers and an unforgettable BLT. Oh. You can hear Max's stomach growling because yeah. he's been growling all morning. <laughs> all right, that's coming up on Texas Eats in just a bit. All right, invasive species, very negative effect on our state's natural resources, even our economy. After the break, we're going to explain how a local organization is trying to slow the spread. We're going to give you an inside look in just a bit. If you've opened the door this morning, maybe to walk to your car or let the dog out, you're noticing that humidity and how warm it is. It's 65 degrees. Will these warm temps stick around for spring break? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. The Texas Parks and Wildlife asking all Texans to help slow down the spread of invasive species affecting our state's natural resources and even our economy. RJ Marquez has more on how you can help them during National Invasive Species Awareness Week. Invasive species are non-native to an ecosystem and can cause environmental harm to human health and quality of life. They're expensive to prevent and control and can also cause a lot of damage to crops, fisheries and forests, costing billions of dollars. For example, aquarium fish are considered an invasive species and do not belong in the San Antonio River. According to the San Antonio River Authority, some of the invasive species causing the most harm to the San Antonio River are what many refer to as armored catfish and tilapia. Armored catfish burrow into riverbanks, which leads to the erosion of the banks and eventually bank collapse. Invasive species are such a problem that Governor Greg Abbott officially has dedicated a week every year to raising awareness and encourages all Texans to learn more about preventing their spread. Boaters can keep zebra mussels, giant salvinia, and other invasive species from being moved and harming more lakes by taking a few minutes to properly clean, drain, and dry boats. And you can report any sightings of invasive species in the San Antonio River on the River Authority's website. And it's not just fish. When landscaping near your home or planting a garden, Texas Parks and Wildlife says it's also important that you choose plants that are native to your region. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right. They so. have these giant apple snails. Yes, they're, uh, they're uh, so yeah. creepy. They're literally the size of like a gala apple, and they produce these egg pods that are terrifying. They're pink and terrifying. Look that's, them up. That's what apple they drain the, the river for. Yeah. They're gross. gross yeah. And you can report that invasive species too. Oh. You can't miss them. They're giant, they're giant brown snails. You know, what would be your ideal weather for spring break, Sarah Max? 70 degrees, maybe 75 degrees, lots of sunshine. Low humidity. Low humidity, no wind. Mm. Well, at one point we're gonna have all of that. Nice. At the and same more. time. <laughs> yeah, take a look at the temperatures over the next seven days. Very, very interesting to see the ups and downs. I'm calling it a 
spring break seesaw back and forth we go. We will be warmest this weekend though. 82 today for the high 83 tomorrow and then a cold front arrives early on Monday morning that knocks our temperatures down into the 50s and 60s for Monday and Tuesday. Nicer Wednesday and Thursday, but then another front arrives knocking our temperatures back down on Friday. So a lot of ups and downs in the week ahead for spring break. A lot to keep tabs on. First thing to know though that it is very, very muggy outside this morning and mild. You don't need the jacket outside. It's 65 degrees, 64 at JBSA Randolph, 69 in Stenson already near 70 degrees, 61 at Bernie Stage Airfield. And as you can see with the satellite overlaid here, cloudy just about everywhere you look. 62 in Kerrville, 64 in Del Rio, 65 in Beeville, and 65 in Victoria. All right, it's also breezy this morning. Winds are from the south gusting up to about 20 miles per hour, but we're seeing sustained winds at about 15 miles per hour. This is what is making it muggy outside because it's bringing in that Gulf of Mexico moisture and keeping it there. Dew points are in the 60s and they're going to be in the 60s all weekend long. So even into the afternoon, we'll have a bit of a, a bit of a heat index this afternoon because of the higher humidity on the future cast. Notice how stubborn these clouds are. We really won't be seeing skies clear until after lunch and then we'll have mostly sunny skies this afternoon. One of the last places to see skies clear will be up in the hill country. And so because of that, temperatures up there will be a little bit cooler. Highs in the mid 70s up in the hill country. But around San Antonio, low 80s is a safe bet today. Mid 80s out west toward Del Rio and then down toward Laredo near 90 degrees for the high temperature this afternoon. We'll be cloudy at 6, uh, 68 degrees start. Clouds will start to clear around noon 74 and then warm this afternoon 82, but that 82 may feel more like 85 because of uh, like heat index out there. South winds today 10 to 15 gusting up to 25, so it will be breezy. Sun's going to set at 636 and it's going to be a mild evening. No need for the jacket if you have Saturday night plans. Temperatures will be near 70 as early as 10 p.m. All right, on the satellite and radar, it is very busy across parts of the western United States. Lots of snowfall fall out there. Uh, you know, winter officially comes to an end on the 22nd of March, and we're going to get a double dose of cold fronts in the week ahead. The first one will arrive Monday morning, so let me take you through the future cast here. We'll be looking at more of the same tomorrow, some patchy drizzle early tomorrow morning, and then afternoon sun will be near 83 degrees tomorrow afternoon, and then by late Sunday night into Monday morning, we're going to see a line of thunder showers develop, especially up near the Dallas Fort Worth area. That's where we could see some severe weather across the state of Texas, but we're going to be on the tail end of things once again here in San Antonio. So really only a thin line of showers is possible through the pre dawn hours of Monday morning and behind that front temperatures will fall into the 50s. So we're going to be going from the 80s on Sunday with temperatures falling into the 60s and 50s on Monday. So a pretty big temperature difference there for you. Again, it's going to be cool on Tuesday with a chance for an isolated shower, much uh, more spring like weather. Wednesday and Thursday and then by Friday another front will arrive. This one could give us a light freeze Friday night early uh, Saturday morning as well. So, you know, Sarah's a gardener. I'm sure she's been itching to, to make that garden look nice out in the front, but a light freeze is possible Saturday morning. So maybe hold off a little bit. Yeah, dormant plants is not cute. You already replanted Evan. I, I have replanted some. OK, holding off no, till I, after the freeze. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> 648, 65 degrees out. Those Spurs go. All right, Spurs on the road again, trying to get a win, breaking their losing streak. We're going to talk about that and Pop's presumptive record-setting win in just a bit. Spring break weekend, so traffic could get, you know, a little crazy at times. Right now, everything looks like it's pretty smooth sailing out there. Super excited. This one right here caught my attention. That's just a BLT, but just done up. We start with the house made sourdough bread, toast it up with a little bit of our proprietary herb oil that we built blend in house as well. Ooh. A couple of strips of bacon, some heirloom tomatoes, romaine lettuce, also some shaved Parmesan cheese in there. But what really makes it unique is the uh, the dressing. We do a, a roasted jalapeno Caesar here. Brings a little bit of heat, but just enough and a little bit of saltiness as well that complements that bacon. This looks wild. Oh, bro. Where's my elbow? 
Mm. If you want the sourdough that's made in house to do a little BLT, that sandwich is just killer. The bacon on the inside stands mm. out. Nice crisp edges on there. There's not too many bites that are better than when you get the acidity from the tomato, the fattiness from the bacon, the saltiness from the cheese, and then the toast on the outside. It just works. That crisp produce on there, that's a great bite, man. <laughs> You know what else we need? A Spurs win. They're prepared to hit the court again tonight. They're on the road, head to Charlotte. They're going to be facing the Hornets, trying to snap a three-game losing streak and trying to get Coach Pop one game closer to making NBA history. So the Spurs head coach, he just needs one more win to tie Don Nelson's record of 1,335 victories and one more win to break the record, which could come Monday against the Lakers when LeBron visits San Antonio. But first, you got to beat the Hornets. And the Spurs aren't pulling the cart before the horse. The focus is beating Charlotte. Hornets are ninth in the Eastern Conference. Spurs are 12th in the West, two and a half games behind the Pelicans going into tonight's matchup. So the Spurs coming off a loss to the Sacramento Kings. Boo. Oh. A team they should have beaten, especially since Lonnie Walker. He missed a career high by only two points. He credits his teammates for building up his amazing offense and confidence this season. The simple fact of just my teammates letting me hoop and trusting in me, you know, um, John Tan Kelton, you know, day in and day out, are always remind me, stay aggressive, you know, you, you're way too good to just be chilling and, and relaxing. So uh, my teammates and my coaches are instilling an immense amount of confidence in myself to allow me to just play freely. Ah, Lonnie, one of my favorite Spurs. All right, tonight is game night. We're going to see what the Silver and Black can do. Lonnie Walker, Devin Vassell, they're questionable for tonight's game. Spurs Hornets tip off 6 o'clock in Charlotte at the Spectrum Center. So go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, let's do it. We're close. We're close to the playoff hunt. Got it. Yeah, there you go. 6.54, 65 degrees out. We'll be right back. Coming up on GMA, it's a race against time for two eastern Ukrainian cities. Russia's defense ministry agreeing to a temporary ceasefire, allowing civilians in those areas to evacuate through humanitarian corridors. This as the Russian onslaught against civilians in Ukraine continues. Many now banding together to slow the Russian advance. We'll have the latest from the White House as lawmakers call for a ban on Russian oil while the U.S. targets Russia's wealthiest with those sanctions and the break down on price hikes in the U.S. due to the incursion. Plus, the California woman who gained worldwide attention after mysteriously disappearing and then reappearing, now in court for the first time, accused of faking her own kidnapping. We have the latest in the case. And finally, all eyes on Coach K. We're taking a look at Duke's head coach's impressive career ahead of his last home game with the Blue Devils this evening. It's all ahead on GMA. Tense moments for Bear County deputies as a suspect leads them on a chase and then begins shooting at them. Now this all happened on the city's west side around 3 a.m. Bear County Sheriff's Office said a vehicle leaving a hotel almost caused an accident. Deputies tried pulling the vehicle over, but it took off and a chase ensued. Several times during that chase, the suspect fired shots at deputies and at one point even pulling up next to a unit and firing through the door. The suspect eventually crashed on Morning Glory and Sinisa Drive and try fleeing the scene, but was caught. A woman who was also in the vehicle was taken in. No word if she will be facing any charges. The suspect, though, will be facing numerous charges, including attempted capital murder of a peace officer. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It's 65 degrees outside right now in San Antonio. Just to put that in perspective for you, we usually see a morning low right around 49 degrees this morning. So we are 16 degrees above the average. Today's going to be a warm one, but we will hold on to those clouds until lunch. And then in the afternoon, sunshine 82 for the high south winds 10 to 15 gusting up to 25. Tomorrow, a very similar day to today. There is a chance for some isolated thunder showers early Monday morning as a cold front moves through. That's going to drop our highs into the 50s and 60s Monday and Tuesday and then we'll be seeing another front during spring break Friday because it's spring break the zoo is mm -hmm. going to be very crowded so coming up at 8 a.m. we're going to be at live at the zoo talking about how they're going to be doing traffic control for spring cool. break All right, we'll see you at 8 a.m.
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A chase, a shooting, and a crash, ending with a driver in handcuffs. How deputies caught up to the suspect and what charges that man is now facing. Taking a look outside with live cam, 65 degrees. It is a warm start to spring break. Will this warm weather stick around? Sarah Spivey will let us know in just a bit. All right, but before we get to Sarah, we're starting with late breaking news on the city's northeast side. Fire crews making sure everyone is safe and everything's okay after a fire broke out at a home. Our Erica Hernandez is live in the 2600 block of Woodbury Drive. That's not far from Nacogdoches and Loop 410. Erica joining us live. So Erica, what do we know right now? Max, we know actually very little right now. We have yet to talk with uh, someone here at the scene, but as you can see, it's still an active scene and most of this home looks like it's a complete loss. Now, neighbors here are telling us that just after 6.30, they noticed the house was fully engulfed in flames. At one point, up to 15 units were here responding. Even when we got here, they were still putting out hotspots and I think they still are right now inside the home. The one thing we don't know if anybody was inside. Now, neighbors are telling us an elderly man did live in this home, but they're not sure if he was here or not. As soon as we get more information, we'll bring that to you. Live on the Northeast side, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Thank right. you, Erica. Thank you, Erica. Well, time now, 801, 65 degrees out there. So Sarah Spivey, People start in spring break this week. What can they expect? Yeah, you know, this weekend is going to be very spring like warm 80s. But next week, there's a couple ups and downs in the forms of cold fronts, a double dose of cold fronts, in fact. But if you are planning on traveling across the state of Texas, get that spring break started. Here's a look at what you can expect this weekend. A travel forecast for you. Know that it's going to be fairly quiet all across uh, the state. Today, temperatures will be fairly warm, mid 70s up in North Texas low to mid 80s around here in south central Texas and by the start of the morning tomorrow cloudy and mild in many places the only area it's going to really be cold is up in the hill uh, up in the panhandle rather where it'll be in the 20s behind a cold front uh, otherwise tomorrow looks to be a warm day too with highs in the 80s there is a chance for some storminess up near the Dallas Fort Worth area ahead of our next cold front but otherwise fairly nice travel weather across the state. All right, let's take a look outside right now. It is cloudy. It's 66 degrees. Winds are from the south at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. It is very muggy too. dew points are in the 60s and we're really not going to see uh, much sunshine until the afternoon. So those clouds will be a bit stubborn. But once we see the sun, 82 degrees and warm this afternoon, breezy too with winds from the south gusting up to 25 miles per hour. We'll talk about how temperatures will seesaw back and forth in the weekend ahead coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a driver shoots at deputies during a chase on the west side early this morning. That's according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Deputies say around three o'clock this morning, a driver pulled out of a hotel parking lot on Culebra Road and then started driving erratically. That's when BCSO tried to pull him over, but the driver didn't stop. Instead, things escalated from there, taking off and eventually the driver allegedly pulled out a gun and shot and fired shots at the deputies. And while a passenger sat beside him, deputies say the driver eventually crashed near St. Cloud and West Woodlawn Avenue. That's when the driver jumped out, jumped out of the vehicle and started running. Deputies were able to catch up to him and take him into custody. The passenger that was with him as well was also taken into custody. It's not clear if she'll face charges. The driver is facing at least one count of attempted capital murder of a police officer. No one was hurt. Also new this morning, investigators trying to track down a different driver. This one speeding off after hitting and killing a man on the city's west side. This is what we know right now. Officers tell us a man and woman were crossing the street just before 1 a.m. in the 8000 block of Claybor Road, not too far from Loop 410. Now, police on the scene telling us a driver in a silver vehicle hit the man, leaving him in the middle of the street. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. That's where he later died. The woman he was with not injured at last check. Officers have not found the driver involved and a driver involved in a different crash taken away in handcuffs. This all happened just after 1030 last night near Highway 281 and Stone Oak Parkway. Police there telling us a woman in a red vehicle ran a red light, hit a driver in a white vehicle, causing it to go into a ditch. First responders had to help the person out of that vehicle. They had minor injuries like cuts and bruises, but otherwise were OK. Police say they arrested the driver in the red vehicle for suspicion of DWI. 
Now to the latest on the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainian president's office says Russia violated a ceasefire, so evacuations have stopped. Now the ceasefire had allowed people to safely escape the war zone. Just hours ago, the Russian defense ministry says they agreed on evacuation routes with Ukrainian forces to allow civilians to leave Mariupol in the southeast and eastern cities. Not clear what caused the break in the ceasefire. Meanwhile, Ukraine's President Zelensky, well, he is denouncing NATO's decision to refuse imposing a no-fly zone over Ukraine. United States Secretary of State Antony Blinken defending NATO's decision, saying a no-fly zone could lead to NATO planes shooting down Russian planes and starting a bigger conflict. But we also have a responsibility, as the Secretary General said, to ensure that the war doesn't spill over even beyond Ukraine. Russia continues to crack down on independent media reporting on the war, going as far as blocking Facebook and Twitter and more media outlets, saying they are pa pausing their work inside the country. A church in Burning is doing what it can to help those in Ukraine. The lead pastor there is from Russia and his wife is from Ukraine. The couple say they started raising money to help send resources to Ukraine earlier this week. They are part of the God Will Provide Church, which has pastors from around the world. So far, the church in Burning has raised $4,000 to help people in Ukraine. They've kept in touch with the pastor who is in the middle of the chaos right now. One of the pastor, he didn't sleep for four days and he was ex uh, he was going through a really hard time. He, he heard the bombs, he heard the shotguns, you know, and then uh, he was asking us for the prayer support. He was crying. The God, the God will provide church will be holding a special prayer service for everyone affected by the invasion tomorrow in Bernie at 2 p.m. The church is located near I-10 and Woodenwood Drive. They are still taking monetary donations to send to that pastor in Austria as well. If you're interested in helping out or attending the service, we have the address and link to donate on our website. And staying here at home, CPS Energy putting out a call to fill two positions on CPS's Citizen Advisory Committee. Now, the utility says the group is one of the ways that CPS Energy gets community impact and feedback. So the committee meets every month. If you want to apply, there are some requirements. You have to live in the CPS energy service area. You have to be in good standing on your energy bill as a CPS customer. Applications can be downloaded at cps.com slash CAC. You can also pick up an application at CPS energy customer service center locations. Those applications will be accepted through March 18th. Time now, just about 8.08, 65 degrees out. A grocery store chain will soon have a presence in San Antonio after being gone for three decades. However, they're taking a new approach when it comes to serving customers in the area. We'll explain ahead. All right, and we've been talking about this through the morning. A great idea for a side hustle might be sitting right in your backyard. How some folks are now finding a new way to cash in. We're going to explain in just a bit. I need in on this side hustle. <laughs> hey, if you want to be outside, today's a great day to do it. 65 degrees, some nice spring-like temperatures, but will these spring-like temperatures stick around for spring break? Sarah will let us know when we come back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 65 to start the weekend. Uh -huh. So Sarah Spivey, are these temps going to continue? Um, well, it's going to be warm today and tomorrow. Okay. So we've got that to look forward to, but it's going to be up and down in the week ahead. At one point, our highs will be in the 50s. So Wild spring break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a pretty interesting pollen count today, too. We just got this in. Uh, every allergen that you see here is low, even though we do have five allergens out there, molds, oak, ash, pine, and elm. And again, every single one of them is low uh, this morning. And today we'll be watching that oak number pretty carefully because we're starting to get into oak season. And as you know, all those live oak leaves will be starting to get some new growth on them and we'll be raking our lawns <laughs> to get rid of those uh, old oak leaves. Outside right now at the airport, it's cloudy uh, and we're going to see these clouds be pretty stubborn this morning. 66 degrees outside and breezy winds from the south at 10 miles per hour. Notice that the dew point and the temperature are fairly close to each other, so we have relative humidity of 84%. You can definitely feel the mugginess out there. It's 63 in Kerrville, 64 in Del Rio, 67 in Tatula this morning, 66 in Beeville. Out in LaGrange, it's 69 degrees and it's 66 in New Braunfels. 
Notice though that as I mentioned, those winds are fairly breezy from the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We've already seen a wind gust of up to 20 miles per hour early this morning and the winds from the south are what are continuing to pump in that Gulf of Mexico moisture and that's why it is so muggy outside so much so that we'll probably even have a heat index value this afternoon, a couple of degrees warmer than what the thermometer actually reads. And as I just mentioned, those those clouds this morning are fairly stubborn. We're going to see them hang around the metro area until about noon and then into the afternoon skies will clear and it's going to be a mostly sunny afternoon and very warm too. even just a couple of hours of sunshine is going to allow our temperatures to soar into the low 80s locally around San Antonio, mid to upper 70s in the hill country and then out west toward Del Rio 85 degrees for the high. Look at Laredo near 90 this afternoon for that high temperature. So at 10 we'll be at 68 and cloudy, clearing skies at noon 74 and then in the afternoon 82 for the high. South winds 10 to 15 gusting up to 25 miles per hour. You will not need a jacket tonight if you have Saturday night plans outside. In fact, it's going to be fairly uh, comfortable out there, although a little bit muggy. Temperatures will still be near 70 by 10 p.m. OK, let's take a look at the big picture here. Uh, we've got quite an active weather pattern out across the west. You can see all of the snowfall and a couple of cold fronts in those areas. Now we are going to get two cold fronts in the week ahead for spring break for many folks. Uh, the first one will arrive on Monday morning and bringing a small chance for rain. So let's take you through the future cast there. Uh, tomorrow morning waking up with some drizzle and in the afternoon tomorrow warm again. So a very similar day tomorrow to today will be near 83 tomorrow afternoon. And then by late Sunday night into Monday morning, a line of thunderstorms is going to develop around that front. Most of the severe weather will be up near Dallas Fort Worth area, or at least the possibility for severe weather. Uh, we're going to be on the tail end of the system, so really only a small window for rain early Monday morning in the pre dawn hours. It will not amount to much, won't help us out with the drought, unfortunately. And then behind that front, temperatures will fall. We'll be falling into the 50s on Monday, so a big difference from the 80s this weekend into the 50s on Monday. It'll be windy and then Tuesday will stay in the 50s too with a small chance for a few showers. Wednesday and Thursday, a little bit nicer spring like weather with highs in the 60s and 70s. And then by Friday morning, another cold front. This one will likely give us a light freeze Saturday morning. So all that springtime planting might be a good idea to hold off until after this upcoming weekend. Max and Sarah. It's not over yet. Nope. <laughs> All right, Sarah's thank you, Sarah. <laughs> thank you. 815, 65 degrees out. All right, let's take a look at our lotto numbers. There, there they are. are. Pick three, six, seven, six, fireball zero, daily four, five, three, zero, one, fireball six. All right, your cash five, four, nine, 24, 27, 34. Here we go. Did you play? I didn't. Do you know what it's up to? I, I think it's still under 100. All right. Let me double check. Go All ahead. All right. 11, 19, 28, 46, 47. Big number five. Mega Pyre four. Good luck. We'll have the number later. Good morning and welcome back. Are you hungry? Yes, I know you are. So hungry. <laughs> uh, so we're going to obviously show you more food. Yes. A dessert shop is serving up some wild, sweet, and savory treats right here in our area. We could do that. David Elder takes us there on today's Texas Eats. Um, but it's not just the sweets out here that's reason to come out here. Mm -hmm. It's also the savory items as well. And check this one out. This one, this is hot Cheetos, but it's also, you have the corn inside of there yes. as well. This you have is, some crema. This is hot cheese preparados. So uh, what we do is we do the hot Cheetos and then we add the nacho cheese and then we layer on the crema, the mayonnaise, every, anything that you would normally go <laughs> into an elote. Right. Uh, it would be, oh, I just want to get it out. is in here. And then if you got a lime, you got to use it right. There we go. Get a little bit of that action going on. 
One of the things that sets this place apart from other snack shops is the fact that they're using white corn. A lot of places are using yellow corn, but if you want to be authentic, it's got to be white. I love snacks. I'm, all, I'm always a snack girl, but mm -hmm. sometimes your stomach gets a little... <laughs> there, there was a lot going There's on there. There's a lot of acid in that. Yeah. All right, 821, 65 degrees out. Okay, yardless pet owners looking for a personal space have a new resource mm -hmm. thanks to homeowners looking to share the love with furry friends. Details after the break. Another option for grocery shoppers after being gone for 30 years from the Alamo City, Kroger is bringing its business back. This time it plans to focus on grocery delivery. Yes, it is part of the future of uh, grocery shopping and all shopping. The business model could lower operating costs. Instead of stores, you'll see refrigerated trucks and a warehouse on San Antonio's northeast side. All you have to do is place an order online. A robot, yes, a robot picks up and bags the items and real people deliver it to your doorstep. Kroger hopes the kickstart this plan later in the year. All right, so we always hear about new side hustles. Well, this new side hustle, it's emerged for homeowners with pet friendly spaces. You can rent out your backyard to other people who have dogs. Yes, we've been talking about the morning. Sarah Costa, are you gonna join in on this? Get in, get in on this side hustle. All right, so here it is. Las Vegas homeowner, Brianna Baldridge, says she's raked in hundreds of dollars just renting out her backyard and her pool by the hour as a private dog park. She uses Sniff Spot, which is kind of like Airbnb for dogs. It's a website to promote your space. You can kind of advertise. She calls it the Scooby Dooby Shack. We have guests that come in and, and have doggy birthday parties and, you know, invite their family. And for us, it's about, you know, everybody just enjoying the space. All right, so Sniff Spot. It features properties in cities across the country. Have you, did you pull up the app or I'm the, the website? I'm gonna download it and break right now. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm starting this. It's amazing to see like what business ideas have come about in just like the last few years. I'm really jealous I didn't think of the Scooby Dooby sh Shack. Yeah. I literally have a Scooby Doo at home. You ha yeah, for those who don't know, Sarah's dog is literally named Scooby. So that could have been the perfect, How we gotta think of a name I gotta for think yours. of an, another, a cooler name. Yeah. Better right. name. <laughs> Time now, 826, 66 degrees out. Okay, a famous chef is using his talent to lend a hand overseas and help feed people fleeing the war in Ukraine. A look at his efforts, plus how people here at home are working to raise money for humanitarian efforts as well today. It's all coming up in our next half hour. And we're also going to be talking about a lot of overnight breaking news. Two people crash while trying to pull into the same driveway. How a driver now dealing with serious injuries, at least one person involved, can now be facing charges. We're going to explain. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday. 8.30 this morning, March 5th. We're already moving into March. The temps finally feel like it, but February was cold. Oh, February was squirrely and miserable. We had like days that Did was like... Did you say it was squirrely? It was so squirrely. It's yeah, like 86 like to like freezing. Sarah yeah. Spive, you got to incorporate squirrely into your forecast Well, now. we're going to have a squirrely spring break. Well done. Unfortunately. Right off the bat. You know, yeah. you know some people... squirrels. I know. Some people <laughs> want it to be nice and sunny and 80 degrees all spring break long. Ours is going to be up and down because of a double dose of cold fronts. So first, let's start with what's going on out there this morning. With satellite and temperatures, some cloudy skies out there right now. A few peaks of sunshine here and there, but these clouds are really not going to totally clear out until the afternoon. It's 61 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 63 in Kerrville, 67 in New Braunfels, 64 in Hondo, 66 at the airport, and it's near 70 degrees on the south side of Bear County near uh, Stinson. But as I mentioned, clouds are really going to totally clear in the afternoon. We've got to wait for that to see plenty of sunshine, and today's going to be a warm day for sure. We're going to be looking at a high temperature in the uh, low 80s, 82 degrees this afternoon. It's breezy out there right now with south winds at about 15 and we could see gusts up to 25 miles per hour today. Very mild in the evening. Temperatures not falling off all that much. Uh, this evening will still be near 70 degrees by 
by midnight, so no need for the jacket today. So a warm and muggy weekend, but we are anticipating our first cold front of the week Monday morning. That will come with a small chance for rain, but really dropping our temperatures pretty significantly. And then uh, throughout spring break, we're going to see temperatures go up and down a bit of a seesaw as far as temperatures are concerned. We'll have another front by the end of the week, so a lot to unpack in the forecast. I'll have that look ahead in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Back to that late breaking news on the city's northeast side. Fire crews wrapping up their work after a fire broke out on a home. Ark Hernandez is live in the 2600 block of Woodbury Drive, where she just got an update from investigators. That's near Nacogdoches and Loop 410. So, Erica, what is the latest? Max, we just spoke to a lieutenant here on the scene, and there was some confusion as when, whether someone was inside that home, and he just clarified for me literally seconds ago that the man that did live in this home did not make it out safely. An investigation has begun into this fire, and as you can see right behind me, there are investigators, arson investigators here at the scene um, trying to figure out how this fire started. Um, it all began around 6.40 this morning. Um, the home was fully engulfed in flames as much many as 15 units responded here at the scene. Um, Lieutenant told us within, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, they were able to contain this fire. There were no other injuries reported, but it looked like it was the, the home inside was some type of hoarding situation. So it made conditions a little bit harder for firefighters to go in and attack this fire. But as you can see, this fire right now looks to be a complete, this house, excuse me, looks to be a complete loss. Investigators said they will still be here on the scene for a few hours investigating. Again, this fire ended up being a deadly fire. We'll have more on this later this morning. Morning. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Erica. All right, a lot of other news happening overnight. A pair of drivers nearly made it home before crashing right in the driveway. All of this happening at home on the west side. One of them is now in critical condition. San Antonio police tell us a motorcyclist and a driver in an Escalade both pulling into a driveway in a neighborhood near Petranco and Hunt Lane. This all happened just before one this morning. That's when the two vehicles collided head on. The motorcyclist thrown from the bike onto the yard. He was taken to the hospital. Everyone else involved is expected to be OK. At least one of the drivers will be evaluated for a DWI. And another situation police investigating. They're trying to figure out what exactly led to a crash on the city's north side. According to officers on the scene, a driver was trying to exit highway to 281 at jones Maltzberger Road. He lost control and rolled the vehicle. He was not hurt. However, police say they did arrest him for possible DWI. Well, the White House is resisting calls from a growing number of lawmakers on both sides of the aisle to ban Russian oil. ABC's White House correspondent Mary Ellis Parks is there with more. On Capitol Hill, calls for a ban on Russian oil growing louder from both sides of the aisle. I'm all for that. Ban it. In the Senate, a new bipartisan bill introduced to prohibit importing Russian oil and gas, led by West Virginia's Joe Manchin and Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, both from energy-rich states. But the White House sidestepping when asked if the president would sign such a bill. We are looking at options we could take right now to cut U.S. consumption of Russian energy, but we are very focused on minimizing the impact to families. If you reduce supply in the global marketplace, you are going to rise, raise gas prices. Only about 1% of Russia's oil exports go to the U.S., while nearly half goes to Europe. And so far, the U.S. and European allies have been responding together in lockstep to Russia's invasion. And J.P. Morgan estimating that in the last few days, as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia is struggling to sell about two-thirds of its oil. International companies not wanting to do business with Russian producers. The White House this week also responding to this tweet from Senator Lindsey Graham. Graham writing, is there a Brutus in Russia? The only way this ends is for someone in Russia to take this guy out, seeming to suggest Russian President Vladimir Putin should be assassinated. That is not the position of the United States government and certainly not a statement you'd hear from, come from the mouth of anybody working in this administration. And some Republicans, too, were quick to criticize Senator Graham for those comments. Senator Ted Cruz wrote, this is an exceptionally bad idea. Use massive economic sanctions, boycott Russian oil and gas, but we should not be calling for the assassination of heads of state. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, the White House. Well, renowned chef Jose Andres has taken his nonprofit to Ukraine's borders. World Central Kitchen is handing out hot meals to refugees as they cross into Poland. 
Andres is been serving thousands of meals to refugees on the Polish side of the border. But in the last few days, they've begun operating inside Ukraine. When the meals arrive, they're brought to a crowded room where women and children rest before trying to move on to Poland or to other countries. Cooking is a way to stand up. It's to say, you're not going to let my people go hungry. We are not going to let our people go hungry. And you're not going to win this war. And the world has to speak up for cooks like us. This is the only way we have to speak up. At least one restaurant in the area was already working to help feed people in need, and now it's partnered with Chef Andres' nonprofit. All right, businesses here in San Antonio, they are stepping up and helping out, trying to support Ukraine. So this weekend, you can actually head to Bakery, Bakery Lorraine at the Pearl. Go with your family, have your picture taken for $10. All the proceeds will be donated to fund humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. Now, you can take part starting at 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and it's also happening tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. I want to give a shout out to the community because mm -hmm. last weekend it was like a, mm -hmm. uh, they raised over $72,000. Yeah. All those proceeds going to Ukraine. So keep up the good work, San Antonio. All right, time now, 837, 66 degrees out. And coming up, if you're looking for more fun activities this spring break, we're talking about splash pads because they're opening. All right, we're also talking about the Spurs. We're going to talk about the game going on tonight and one step closer, hopefully, to pop breaking the all-time wins record for a coach? Question mark? We're going to explain. All right, if it, these splash pads are opening up today, will the weather play nice? It's 66 degrees at 838 this morning. Sarah Spivey has your spring break forecast when we come back. Good morning, welcome back. There is always a reason to celebrate today. It's better than most. It is National Play Outside Day, and we have a perfect way for you to celebrate. You can go one of the city's splash parks, splash pads, the Parks and Rec Department, opening them today at 9 a.m. The one at uh, Yanaguana Park mm -hmm. is my favorite. Top tier? Yeah, it's awesome. So there are five splash pads around the city. They are open, and they're open to the public and they're free to enjoy. You can see those locations on your screen right now on that map. They'll be open daily from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I, I love splash pads. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like we had those growing up. I did not. Yeah. And I just you know what like we did growing up? Mm. Put on the sprinkler. Yep. Yeah, we had uh, the, the slip and slide that ruined my parents' grass. <laughs> 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 so Sarah Spivey is today going to be a good day to head out to the splash pad? A great day, in fact, especially in the afternoon because we're going to be in the 80s, guys. So those kiddos will need a way to cool down a little bit. The splash pad sounds like a good idea. Outside right now, though, it is fairly cloudy and we are looking at a very mild morning. You know, usually we see a morning low temperature of 49 degrees. Well, we're already 17 degrees above that. We're at 66 at the airport, 68 in New Braunfels, 63 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 63 in Kerrville and 64 in Hondo. You can see these clouds uh, moving on through. There are a few peaks of sunshine around San Antonio right now, even some clearer skies in southern Wilson County. But really, we won't be seeing these clouds totally clear out until the afternoon. And, and right now it is completely overcast across the hill country, Kerrville, uh, Lakey, Real County area and up toward Rock Springs. It's 64 in Del Rio, 68 in Laredo, 71 already in LaGrange. And it is going to be a warm day for us and a muggy day too. Dew points are in the 60s. That's toward the top of our scale. In fact, it's past this scale here. Uh, dew points in the 60s mean that you can feel the humidity out there and in some cases in the morning hours you can see it and I think we'll have some drizzle early tomorrow morning. But the reason why we're seeing high humidity is because these winds are from the south just pumping in that Gulf of Mexico humidity and they're fairly breezy. These are sustained winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour and throughout the day today we'll have wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. So today's forecast calls for fairly cloudy skies until the afternoon and that's when we'll see sunshine, great splash pad weather, uh, sprinkler running weather, whatever you want to call it. In the afternoon, 82 degrees for the high. We'll have mostly sunny skies this afternoon and after the sun sets around 630, we're actually going to be seeing a fairly mild evening. If you have Saturday night plans, don't worry about the jacket because it's going to stay fairly mild, still near 70 degrees by 10 p.m. And as I mentioned, winds will be breezy. All right, take a look at tomorrow's future cast. In the morning hours, we will have some areas of drizzle.
and it'll be just a couple of degrees warmer tomorrow in the morning in the mid 60s, mid to upper 60s. Then around noon, a lot like today, we're going to start to see skies really clear and in the afternoon tomorrow, a couple of degrees warmer than today. We'll be in the low 80s around San Antonio, but look at Catula, look at Carrizo Springs, Eagle Pass near 90 degrees tomorrow. So a warm day tomorrow too. And then things start to change for us. Take a look at the satellite and radar across the west. You can see all of the snowfall across the Rockies and even parts of the Pacific Northwest. There's a cold front that's going to be knocking on our doorstep and moving through our early Monday morning. So in the pre dawn hours of Monday with it, a small chance for rain, not a great chance for rain, but a thin line of thunder showers early Monday morning uh, between the hours of about two o'clock in the morning through about eight o'clock in the morning. That's when we'll have a shot at some rain. But another big thing you'll notice is how quickly temperatures are going to drop. Take a look at the temperatures over the next seven days. Pretty wacky spring break for for those who are off because temperatures are going to be up and down. So today and tomorrow, warm 80s. That front moves through early Monday morning and our temperatures throughout the day on Monday will drop into the 50s and 60s and it's going to stay cool Tuesday too. We'll have better weather Wednesday and Thursday with more sunshine, but then another front arrives early Friday morning and that knocks our temperatures back down as well. And something to notice about a uh, Friday too is after that front moves through by Saturday morning, we'll likely have a light freeze around San Antonio, a late season freeze. So avoid planting a lot in the yard because there is going to be that light freeze on Saturday. All in all, again, temperatures up and down. So enjoy this warm weekend. We'll be back with more news after the break. Good morning. Welcome back and go Spurs go. It is game day for the San Antonio Spurs. Silver and black in Charlotte. They're taking on the Hornets and they're going to try to do that by breaking the losing streak. Yes, three in a row now. So a win not only could help San Antonio's record, but it could also bring Coach Pop one game closer to making NBA history. The Spurs head coach needs one win to tie Don Nelson's record of 1,335 victories, and he just needs one more than that to break the record, which could happen in the next couple days if the Spurs win both tonight's game and Monday night's game against the Lakers. But we are not going to get ahead of ourselves. The Hornets are the ninth team in the East, and the Spurs are the 12th in the West. Spurs coming off a tough loss against the Sacramento Kings. Not a great team in the Kings. No. Especially, it hurts because Lonnie Walker, he shelled out and showed up. He almost had his career high in points, and he credits his teammates for helping build the confidence. The simple fact of just my teammates letting me hoop and trusting in me, you know, um, John Tan Kelton, you know, day in and day out, are always remind me, stay aggressive, you know, you, you're way too good to just be chilling and, and relaxing. So uh, my teammates and my coaches are instilling an immense amount of confidence in myself to allow me to just play freely. All right, and play freely you should, especially tonight. Like I said, San Antonio in Charlotte. Tip-off set for 6 p.m. at the Spectrum Center. Go Spurs go. Lonnie, though, is questionable as well as Devin Vassell. Go Spurs go. Okay, one of the most popular boxers is coming to San Antonio next month. Ryan Garcia will headline the, the DAZONE and Golden Boys promotions bout in the Alamo Dome on April 9th. And tickets are on sale now. This will be for a big fight for Garcia, who is coming off wrist surgery, but he's also hoping to continue his career after taking a break from the sport last year to deal with some mental health issues, including suicidal thoughts. The 23 year old Garcia has almost 9 million followers on Instagram alone and is hoping to use his popularity and platform to help others. I think that you know, it's going to help out a lot of people, the things that I've spoken about and things that I'm coming out with. Uh, I'm coming out with a Snapchat series also revolving around mental health. So a lot of good is going to come out of it, no matter what I had to endure and hear about, you know, myself and all the opinions put on me and, you know, all the bad stuff, right? Forget about that. There's people telling me I saved their lives. So I think that's way more important than boxing. I, I always tell young fighters, look, if you have something to say, um, if you have something to do, don't, don't bottle it in, you know, speak about it, do it, go out there, you know, make the right choices, uh, talk about the right subjects. Um, look, Ryan Garcia advocating 
um, um, about uh, uh, mental health is a great thing for him. So the more he can talk about it, the better it is for him, the more of a release it is for him. You can hear more from Garcia and Oscar de la Hoya tomorrow night on Instant Replay, including their thoughts on seeing their colleagues return to Ukraine to fight against the Russians. Instant Replay starts at 11 p.m. right after the night beat. Time now, 8.52, 66 degrees out. Well, taking care of your home can be a lot of work, especially if your house is a fixer-upper. The questions you should be asking for if looking to make repairs and upgrades. Buying and maintaining a home is a lot of work, and we don't expect to have all the answers. That's why there are some important questions you should never be too embarrassed to ask. One question we get all the time is, how do I know when to hire a pro and when to DIY? As a person who likes to take on my own projects, try new things, and DIY, I completely understand the appeal. And Angie, or when people ask me if it's okay to take on a DIY project, I tell them to ask themselves about the three T's time, tools, and talent. If you have all three, you can definitely get the job done right. If you're lacking any of those three things, like time or a particular tool needed for that job, it's time to call in a pro. Think about the next home project on your list. Is it complex? Is it dangerous? Is there a risk for property damage? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it's probably a good idea to bring in a pro to do the job right from the beginning. If your project is simple, you have relevant experience, and you're okay with the chance it won't be perfect, then go ahead and give it a try. Making an expensive mistake can take the fun out of DIY, so do your research and know your risk before deciding to take it on yourself. If you're looking at buying a home this next year, you might be wondering if it makes sense to take on the project of a fixer-upper. A fixer-upper can be a great choice if it's in the perfect location or if it's the only option within your budget. However, it is important to understand what projects you'll need to do in the first year and what they might cost before committing. Work closely with your home inspector to really understand the scope of projects. And even before you purchase, make sure you have the time and money to commit to fixing it up. Sometimes fixing up fixer uppers is a long multi-year process. Take a walk around your fixer upper. Make a list of any changes or repairs you want to make. One more really common question is, how do I know if there's mold in my walls? especially if you live in a warm, humid, or damp environment. The key to detecting mold is to know what mold looks like and smells like. It usually has a musty smell and causes irregular spots. Mold loves to live in damp places, so make sure to check basements, bathrooms, behind walls, closets. If you suspect there's mold in your home but still aren't sure where it's coming from, try ordering a mold test or hiring a professional to find and get rid of it quickly. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. All right, there you go. Do you learn a lot? I hate DIY projects. <laughs> a lot of Always. people like them, though. Yeah, no, I don't. My, yeah. Hire a pro. If it's outside, I'll do it, but okay. inside, no. That's fair. All right, 857, 66 degrees out. Okay. New York is charged with a hate crime after police say he attacked a New Yorker. Attacked. Um, is charged with a hate crime after police say he attacked seven women within two hours. The other charges he is facing. And still to come. So March is... Colorectal, colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. So yeah. we've taken a look at this importance, the importance of screening and what are some treatments. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. We're gonna start off with a live look out at the Alamo City. Ooh, starting with some cloud, definitely some humidity. It is 66 degrees to start the day. What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments, but until then, good morning. Nine o'clock this Saturday, March 5th. Thank you so much for joining us, starting your weekend with us. So, just came off our respective weekends, our weekends, what'd you do? I just got a lot of chores done and stuff. I want to say happy spring break to mm. all those that are kicking off spring break this week. Um, so, Sarah, today there's probably going to be a lot of people on the roads. There's yeah. probably going to be a lot of kids trying to get outside. 
There will, and we've got a Texas traveling forecast here for you in just a bit. For now, though, I want to start off with some spring allergies. Let's take a look at the pollen count. Now, thankfully, even though there are five allergens in the air, molds, oak, ash, pine, and elm, they are all low in today's pollen count. Outside right now, it is fairly cloudy. You can see a few peaks of sunshine there uh, on 410. So we are seeing some peaks of sunshine through the clouds. It is muggy at 67 degrees, and it's breezy, too. Winds are from the South at 16 miles per hour, gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour. If you are planning on hitting the roads and traveling across the state of Texas today, it's going to be a warm one. We don't anticipate any problems on the roads. Uh, temperatures will be in the low to mid 80s around South Central Texas and then in North Texas, mid 70s out toward the West toward El Paso near 70 degrees. Tomorrow morning, starting off with some drizzle here in San Antonio. And as we look uh, into the afternoon, it should be fairly quiet. Uh, across most of Texas in the evening hours, though, near the Dallas Fort Worth area, there will be some storms. That's from a front that's going to be moving through San Antonio. And over the next seven days, we're going to see a big difference in temperatures from day to day. This weekend, warm 80s. But by Monday, we'll be looking at temperatures falling into the 50s and 60s. Tuesday is going to be fairly chilly, too. And we'll have a couple of nice days in there. But this upcoming spring break, as you can see, is going to be all over the map when it comes to temperatures. We'll Talk, talk about this uh, rain chances and what you can expect, even the potential for a late season freeze in just a few minutes. Air, uh, Max. Thank you, Sarah. Well, we are continuing to follow some late breaking news through the morning. Fire crews at a northeast side home investigating a house fire that we now know is deadly. Yeah, we're learning that someone has died inside that home. Our Erica Nandes is live at the scene with the latest. Good morning, Erica. Good morning, Sarah and Max. So we just spoken to some some neighbors here and they are truly heartbroken. They all knew the man who was inside this home and who did not make it out safely. Now, a little background on this fire. It started around 640 a.m. It was fully engulfed when firefighters arrived. It took about 50 units to knock down this fire. But they were telling me that a lieutenant on the scene told me that there was they had some trouble getting inside because there was so many contents inside the home and it it made it a dangerous situation for firefighters, but they did were able to knock down this fire and immediately were able to find that gentleman that lives inside this home. Now that investigation is ongoing as to what caused this fire to start. Again, neighbor, neighbors are heartbroken. They tell us that the, the gentleman was very friendly, oftentimes cutting his neighbor's yards as well as his own, and that this is really a sad situation here and a tragic loss for them all in this neighborhood. We'll have more on this fire coming up in the next half hour. Sarah Max. Thank you, Erica. Also new this morning, Bear County Sheriff's deputies say a man fired a gun at them during a chase on the west side early this morning. This happened around three o'clock this morning. They say a driver pulled out of a hotel at a parking lot on Clever Road and started driving erratically. A deputy says he tried to pull him over, but that person took off. Deputies say during the chase, the driver allegedly pulled out a gun and shot at deputies, all while a passenger was also in the vehicle. The driver eventually crashed near St. Cloud and West Woodlawn Avenue, but the driver jumped out of the vehicle and started running. Authorities caught him. The passenger was also taken into custody. It is not clear if she'll face any charges. The driver is facing at least one count of attempted capital murder of a police officer. No one was hurt. Well, right now, police working, investigating, trying to track down a hit and run driver who police tell us hit and killed a man on the city's west side. This is what we know right now. Officers on the scene telling us a man and woman were crossing the street just before 1 a.m. in the 8000 block of Calabria Road. This is near Loop 410. Police telling us the driver in a silver vehicle hit the man, leaving him right in the middle of the street. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. That's where he later died. The woman he was with not injured. All right, so the homestead exemption is a great way for some homeowners to receive some tax relief. But do you know if you qualify? Well, you can find out today at a homestead exemption clinic. District 5 Councilwoman Terry Castillo, she's partnering with the Homestead Exemption Community Housing Outreach Coalition, and they're hosting a property tax clinic. Homeowners will be able to apply for the exemption that can help them save on their taxes. So staffers from the Bear County Appraisal District, they're going to be on hand and they're going to be accepting applications. The clinic is going to be at the Collins Garden Library that is on North Parks Boulevard. It's right by the HEB on Nogalitos. So homeowners planning to attend should have their driver's license. 
property records showing ownership, things like a deed and a will, your most recent utility bill, military documents, and any survival benefits paperwork. This is a two-hour clinic, and it starts at 10 a.m. It goes till noon. The San Antonio missions are doing their part to help drive in more blood donations. The ball club is hosting a blood drive today. The event starts at 11 this morning at Wolf Stadium, which is located off Highway 90. The goal is to help replenish local blood supplies with all types of blood, especially type O blood. Those who donate will receive a ticket to a missions game and a feeling lucky shamrock t-shirt to avoid a possible wait time. You are encouraged to make an appointment by going on to southtexasblood.org backslash give. The blood drive ends this afternoon at 4 p.m. In your morning headlines, a New York City man being charged with hate crimes after allegedly assaulting several Asian women. So the Manhattan District Attorney's Office says this man, Stephen Zegjong, attacked at least seven women during a two-hour period last weekend in what officials describe as unprovoked violence. Zegjong was charged with assault or attempted assault in connection to four of the victims. At least three more attacks are still being investigated. The suspect is expected to be in court next Wednesday. Well, colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in U.S. men and women combined, and regular screening for colon cancer is quite simply the key to surviving. Here's Ursula Perry. Michael Sepienza lost his mother to colorectal cancer. There is really one reason why she died, and it's because she did not get screened and she did not get checked. That's why he started the Colorectal Cancer Alliance to promote awareness. This type of cancer is expected to cause more than 52,000 deaths in the U.S. this year alone. That's according to the American Cancer Society. But the overall death rate has dropped over the past several decades thanks to screening tools and treatments. Screening can find colorectal cancer early when it's easier to treat. For the general public, the screening age just about a year ago dropped to 45. So everybody that is at average risk should get screened at 45. For those at high risk, talk to your doctor about whether you need to start screening earlier than 45. While there's no sure way to prevent colorectal cancer, there are some other ways to lower your risk. One is a diet high in fiber. Two is exercise, regular 30 minutes a day, five days a week, like they say for heart health, et cetera, absolutely reduces your risk for colon cancer. Limiting red and processed meats, drinking less alcohol, and quitting smoking may also help. But getting screened is one of the most powerful prevention tools. If you get a screening, you can actually prevent that from happening. You can prevent those adenomas or what we call polyps from actually growing into cancer. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 909, 67 degrees out. Wildfires are doing more damage than just burning up acreage. According to scientists, it's also depleting the ozone layer. That's still to come. And a crazy story of a dog warning his family of a dangerous animal right under the bed. We're gonna explain in just a bit. 67 degrees, those clouds are still hanging around. Sarah Spivey will let us know about your spring break forecast. We come back. All right, this story is a good reason to pay attention to your dog's barking because you never know what's hiding under your back deck. So a Boulder, Colorado family was alerted by their dog that something was in their backyard. They thought maybe it was a raccoon, but they were shocked to find it was an actual mountain lion <laughs> hiding under their deck. Colorado Parks and Wildlife helped wrangle the animal from underneath its hiding place. They say the lion was not a fully grown adult. Well, thank goodness, but he already weighed 120 pounds. Wildlife officers relocated the animal to a remote area. Oh, my goodness. Do you listen when your dog barks? Well, my dogs bark like if a school bus drives by, <laughs> if the neighbors across the street start their truck, which I apologize to my neighbors because my dogs are always barking. It's all right. They're all good right. guard dogs, though. Yeah, Y'all mountain lions are fierce, but I couldn't scary. help 
going like, aw, to that. I know. It looked cute. They're like, oh, it's just a puppy at like, you know, 120 pounds. Jeez. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so uh, I want to start with the clouds outside right now because, as you can see, they're already starting to break up a little bit there at the airport. Some patches of blue there on the top of your screen. But all in all, it's a mostly cloudy start to the day. It's 67 degrees, breezy too. If you go outside, maybe for your morning walk, Take those dogs for a walk. It's breezy outside. Uh, winds are from the south at 16 miles per hour at the airport right now. And it's fairly humid too. Dew points are in the 60s. Those temperatures in the dew points are close to each other. Relative humidity is at 81%. It's 65 in Uvalde, 65 in Del Rio, 64 in Kerrville, already 70 degrees in Catula, already 68 in Beeville, and 71 in LaGrange. But as I mentioned, those winds are breezy. A sustained wind of 21 miles per hour in New Braunfels. We're likely seeing gusts of up to 20 to 25 miles per hour out there right now. This is just pumping in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And we're seeing dew points in the 60s. That is toward the top of the scale. You can feel the mugginess out there and we'll even have a heat index value today, allowing for the, it to feel about three to five degrees warmer than what the thermometer actually reads this afternoon. So these clouds are going to be clearing by noon. We're going to be looking at mostly sunny skies and in the afternoon it is going to be mostly sunny. Just a few hours here of sunshine are going to allow for us to warm up very quickly and very efficiently. 82 for the high in San Antonio, mid to upper 70s in the hill country a little bit cooler up in those higher elevations, but still look out toward Del Rio 85 today for the high temperature 84 in Carrizo Springs Laredo 88 degrees this afternoon. Definitely a warm one. We're running about uh, nearly 10 degrees above the average of high temperature this time of year. So fairly cloudy still at 10, but clearing skies at noon 74 and then the afternoon 82 south winds today as I showed you gusting up to about 25 miles per hour and then tonight if you have Saturday night plans outside, it's going to be mild. You're not going to have to worry about the jacket or anything like that. Temperatures will be near 70 degrees still by 10 p.m. OK, let's talk about the big picture and how in the week ahead, while many are enjoying spring break, there's going to be some ups and downs in far, as far as temperatures uh, go. Take a look out toward the west. You can see all of the activity out there, snowfall across the Rockies, even across parts of the Pacific Northwest. There's our cold front. It's in California right now, but it's part of a bigger system that's going to be bringing some severe weather across North Texas and parts of the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, but for us here in San Antonio, here's what our future cast looks like tomorrow morning. Drizzle in the morning hours and then sunshine in the afternoon will be near 83 degrees. So a day very similar to today with just that added drizzle in the morning. And then that front is going to be moving through Sunday night into Monday and across the Dallas Fort Worth area Sunday night into Monday. There could be some severe weather, but once again, we're going to be on the tail end of this system here. So we are not anticipating a lot of rain from this front, but a small window for uh, a few thunder showers in the pre dawn hours of Monday. But after that front moves through, it's just going to be chilly and windy. In fact, throughout the day on Monday, our temperatures will fall into the 50s with a stout wind from the north gusting up to 35 miles per hour. That's going to keep it cool on Tuesday as well. Highs will only be in the 50s on Tuesday, a chilly day on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Things look a little bit more spring like, right? We're going to be looking at highs in the 60s and 70s with plenty of sun, but that front arrives uh, Friday morning. Another front double dose of cold fronts arrives Friday morning. That'll keep things cooler too in the 50s. And in fact, by Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, we'll have a light freeze in San Antonio. So uh, yeah, all, everybody who's going out and planting the gardens for spring. You may want to hold off until the end of this weekend, upcoming weekend, but if not, we'll, we'll, we'll give you plenty of advance notice, Sarah and Max. I know I said it a week and a half ago and we had our last freeze, but mm -hmm. I hope this next freeze is our last one. Fair. 918, <laughs> 67 degrees out. Community Theater, it's back in San Antonio. We have a preview of their current production, the classical musical Hairspray. Well, every year, hundreds of wildfires burn here in the U.S. and across the world. It appears those fires are damaging more 
than the land and property. And a new study scientists say the smoke is actually depleting the ozone layer. Using satellite data, scientists in analyzed the effects of these massive fires that burned in Australia during 2019 and in 2020, and they found that the smoke decreased nitrogen dioxide levels in the stratosphere, which is the first step in a series of reactions that depletes the ozone. Researchers estimated those reactions depleted the column of ozone by 1%. Scientists say climate change is likely to lead to more frequent and intense wildfires in the future. The study was published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. All right, time now, 922, 67 degrees out. Woodlawn Theater is all the buzz thanks to the latest stage performance. We're giving you a look behind the scenes of the musical Hairspray. Well, if you're looking for a way to support local artists, head over to the Woodlawn Theater. All right, so the community theater is currently putting on the classical musical Hairspray in, in this week's <laughs> backstage segment. Our crew got an inside look at the new production. Take a look. Woodlawn Theater is putting on a show that will transport audiences to the 60s. We're talking with the cast about what audiences can expect when they watch Hairspray. It's a fresh um, show. Um, it's nothing that's like, either, like daunting or something that just makes you think too hard. It's one that just kind of draws you in and you have fun with it. Um, it's kind of expecting the unexpected. You know the story, but to see it on stage, it's like, what, what can you do? Or like, what is that? Um, especially in San Antonio, because it's an artistic city, but because we don't get to see a lot of arts and shows that make like big, big New York stages, um, we get to have it here at the Woodlawn. There's hilarious jokes. There's insane dance numbers insanity but I the heart of the show really is like it's all it's all fun and games but I really think to the core of the story is love and integration and what we all really need I think especially right now with everything that's going on in the world hairspray runs March 4th to March 27th for more information just visit ksat.com Adrian Ortega ksat 12 news fantastic how much hairspray do you use? 927, 67 degrees out. All right, U.S. sanctions appear to finally be hitting President Vladimir Putin where it hurts him. The latest from Ukraine. And crazy story overnight. We have a lot of breaking news to tell you about. We're going to explain in just a bit. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday, 930 this morning. It is March 5th. So you did some chores. Did you make it outside the last couple days? I did. I was in and out. Okay. I, I washed my car. I never wash my car. I know, it's usually like a once a year thing. It's very impressive. So I did it all my own, four hours, getting all the Good dog, on you. dog hair. Yeah, that's it. Dogs, I love them, but man, they will ruin your car. <laughs> and Sarah, am I gonna have to worry about you know, having to rewash in the next couple of days? No, but there is a small chance for rain Monday morning around San Antonio. But hey, it is spring break. For many folks, uh, and some might be heading down to Corpus Christi Bay. Here's a look at that forecast for this weekend. It's not going to be ideal, okay? Today and tomorrow, the winds will be up to about 20 miles per hour with wave heights of uh, 3 to 5 feet. But here's the thing. Today and tomorrow, it'll feel fine out there in the upper 70s. But the water temperature is still fairly cold. We're still looking at a water temperature near 60 degrees. And then by Monday, we do have a chance for scattered showers and storms there uh, near Corpus Christi. But let's get back to San Antonio. A warm day in store for us today. We're at 67 right now at the airport, but look up toward New Braunfels. Already 73. 67 in Hondo. 63 at Bernie Sage Airfield. More cloudy up near Kerrville too, and they're at 64. Today we're going to see those clouds stick around, but by the afternoon it'll be really sunny around San Antonio. 82 for the high temperature today, so a warm day for us in San Antonio. Breezy too. South winds gusting up to 25 miles miles per hour in a mild evening tonight. Hey, the pollen count today. Things look OK. There are five allergens out there. Molds, oak, ash, pine and elm, but they are all low. So that's some good news. But you can tell that the trees are starting to pollinate for uh, tree pollen 
uh, allergens out there today. So what's up with the weather? What do you need to know? Well, again, a warm and muggy weekend this weekend will be in the 80s both today and tomorrow, but that cold front will arrive Monday morning and that's going to send our temperatures down into the 50s uh, for Monday and Tuesday. And throughout spring break this upcoming week, we're going to see temperatures go up and down. We've got another cold front toward the end of the week to talk about too. So a lot to keep your eye on and we'll be keeping a tab on things, including a chance for rain with that front early Monday morning. We'll talk about that a little bit more in depth coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to that late break news we've been following throughout the morning. Firefighters still on the scene of that early morning deadly house fire. It had more than a dozen fire trucks respond. That fire, like Max just said, turned out to be deadly. So our Erica Hernandez has been covering this since 7 o'clock this morning and is still live from the scene. Now, Erica, any updates? Yes, yeah, Sarah, the medical examiner just arrived here at the scene and is right now inside the home where that man was found early this morning. Now, this fire started around 640 and the home was fully engulfed in flames when fire units arrived. Uh, like you guys just said, there was about 15 units that arrived on the scene because of the, the condition of the home and so many contents inside. It was hard for firefighters to get in. But once that fire was out, the investigation to began into what caused it. Meanwhile, Neighbors here are heartbroken. They say the man that lived here, they named, the, uh, his name was Charlie. He's very friendly with them. And they're, they're, like I said, they're all heartbroken about the loss of their friend. We'll have more on this fire later this afternoon on the news at 5. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Erica. A lot happening overnight as well. A pair of drivers nearly making it home before crashing right in the driveway. All of this happening at a home on the west side. One of those involved in the crash in critical condition. San Antonio police tell us a motorcyclist and a driver in an Escalade both were pulling into a driveway in a neighborhood near Petranco and Hunt Lane just before 1 a.m. That's when the two vehicles collided and the motorcycle was thrown from his bike onto the yard. He was taken to the hospital. Everyone else involved is expected to be okay. At least one of the drivers now being evaluated for a DWI. Well, a man is lucky to walk away without any injuries after he lost control of his vehicle earlier. We we're told the man was driving north on 281 when he attempted to take the Jones Maltzberger exit. Somehow the man lost control and ended up rolling his vehicle. The driver was not injured, but he was taken in for DWI. All right, happening right now, Southside ISD hosting a COVID clinic, but it's so much more than that. Organizers are offering families, especially with children, not only the COVID vaccine, the booster and COVID tests, but there's a lot more. The free clinic already underway at Southside High School ACES Cafeteria. That is 19190 281 South. Organizers offering families so much. Here we go. We also have the free eye exams. Yes, so there you go. It is open, started at 9 a.m. It goes until noon. It helps check for eye disease and the other issues. It is free and open to the public. There you go. You have until noon to head out there. Also happening right now with San Antonio Parks and Rec Jam and Jam Tree Adoption Event. Say that fast. <laughs> In all 600 fruit and nut trees will be given away for free today. This super popular event allows people to choose between a fruit or a nut tree. This is a drive through event and only one tree will be given out per car. San Antonio Parks and Rec teamed up with the San Antonio Food Bank to host today's Jam In Jam Tree Adoption <laughs> event. The free tree event is going on right now and it is slated to go until noon uh, or till supplies last because we know this one goes quick. All right. Now to the latest in the Ukraine situation, U.S. sanctions ramping up against Russia's oligarchs. President Putin's super rich friends feeling the financial squeeze after the Ukraine invasion. ABC's Lama Hassan is in London with more. This morning, the U.S. naming names, revealing which oligarchs they're sanctioning for bankrolling Putin, hoping the financial pain will force Russia to stop the war. The goal was to maximize the impact on Putin and Russia and to minimize the harm on us and our allies and friends around the world. 19 oligarchs and 47 of their closest associates and family members now banned from traveling to the U.S. And Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov routinely seen by Putin's side, fully cut off from the U.S. financial system. The same for two of the richest men in the country, Nikolai Tokarov and Alishar Usmanov, who is worth over $14 billion. Usmanov, the owner of the superyacht Dilbar, the largest in the world, with 12 suites, two helicopter pads and a crew of nearly 100 
valued at nearly $600 million. That ship now blocked from being used in the U.S. It's sitting in Germany. Its fate uncertain. While in France, this 280-foot yacht owned by the CEO of state oil and gas company Rosneft seized in response to EU sanctions. As the threat of sanctions grows, reports multiple luxury yachts owned by Russian billionaires have made their way to the Maldives to avoid being extradited to the U.S. If you're trying to evade our sanctions, if you're engaging in money laundering, if you're using corrupt proceeds to purchase that yacht, we are coming for you and we're coming for those assets. Now, interestingly, one famous oligarch, his name is Roman Abramovich. He is an EU citizen. He owns one of the world's most famous soccer clubs, Chelsea. He has not been sanctioned yet, and that's because the EU has not been able to build a strong case against him and other wealthy Russians. Lama Hassan, ABC News, London. Well, a church in Bernie is doing what it can to help those in Ukraine. The church's lead pastor is from Russia. His wife is from Ukraine. The couple tells us they started raising money to help send resources to Ukraine. They are part of the God Will Provide Church, which has pastors from around the world. So far, the church in Bernie has raised $4,000 to help people in Ukraine. They've kept in touch with the pastor who is in the middle of the chaos right now. So the lead pastor in Bernie also keeping in touch with the pastor who is helping gather resources in Austria. From there, those resources will be taken to the Ukrainian border. John Paul Baraja spoke with that pastor and has the story. Eight days ago, the Russian military began its invasion of Ukraine. It didn't take long for the world to see humanitarian aid was needed and needed fast. While one million people have fled, Others are doing what they can to help those who have stayed behind. It, it's crazy in the conditions that they're working in right now. Uh, they're doing surgeries in basements of buildings or in uh, the metros. And imagine they're having labor. Uh, they're having the daily, you know, causes of sicknesses and diseases and plus wounded soldiers. Vitaly Ternetsky is the pastor of Austria's God Will Provide International Church. Originally from Ukraine and with family still there, he started making calls. I think it was like 24 hours where I was able to get a full semi truck. We have another three pallets of medicine that just arrived. Full of different humanitarian aid. I'm talking about sleeping bags, tents, mattresses, clothing. With an outpouring of support from other churches around the globe. Including here in Bernie, other organizations and businesses, they've been able to send four semi-trucks full of supplies to three different cities this week, including Kyiv, where Russian troops are advancing. I have one guy who's driving all the way into Warsaw, Poland, and he's, uh, my cousin is there and his wife is there. So she receives the goods and she, uh, she brings it to the border and the husband, he picks up the stuff and then drives it directly into Kiev. And these deliveries of goods is on top of housing refugees who have made it out of their war-torn country. They took 50 people in just yesterday. The, the psychological damage that they have. Imagine you've grown up in a city, you've lived there. You wake up in the morning to sirens and bombs going off. Chernetsky is proud of what they have done, but says the work is far from over. Pleading for more donations because the supplies are not just helping those fighting physically, but rejuvenating morale. They feel that the world is behind them. Plus, they are being uh, threatened on their own territory and they are not giving up. And that was John Paul Brahas reporting. Time now, 941, 67 degrees out. All right. If you're looking to indulge in comfort food, David Elder has a spot for you. We're talking about pancakes and cookie dough. What a combo. Right? That sounds so good right now. Let's go. All right. Taking a live look out there. 67 degrees to start your weekend. What is the rest of the day? What does people's spring break look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. All right. Well, what is it? 67 degrees yeah. to start the weekend. A much different feel than what we saw last weekend. Oh, my Good gosh. way to start spring break. Guys, last week and last Saturday, we were in the 40s all day. Boo. Today, we're going to be in the 80s today and tomorrow. So it's going to feel a lot more like spring, but it's temporary. No, yeah, we've got two cold fronts in the forecast this week. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside uh, with the satellite image and temperatures. And you can see that although we started off very cloudy this morning, we're now seeing those clouds break up around San Antonio. So we're going to be warm today. It's mostly cloudy outside right now. 73 already in New Braunfels, 67 at the airport, 68 at Port SA, 70 already in Castroville, 73 at Stinson, 74 in Pleasanton, 64 in Kerrville, a wider view 
here. There's a good amount of sunshine southeast of San Antonio, but most areas uh, to the west and to the north of San Antonio are completely cloudy. And it's in these areas that we're going to struggle to see sunshine until the afternoon. Uh, we'll be looking at eventually clearing skies, but all in all, a very warm and muggy start to the day. We usually see a morning low in the 40s this time of year, and we only got down to 65 degrees. High humidity outside right now. Dew points are in the 60s. That is muggy. You can feel it. And we have a wind from the south to thank for those muggy conditions. Winds are breezy, sustained at 16 miles per hour at the airport. Wind gusts of 25 miles per hour are possible. But all of this is just pulling in that Gulf of Mexico moisture. That's why it's a little muggy outside, and that's why we're going to have a bit of a heat index today. It's going to stay breezy, though, throughout the day, too. So that southerly breeze will feel nice. Uh, it's just going to be breezy with gusts up to about 25 miles per hour today. All right, we'll be in the mid 70s by noon. That's when we'll start to see skies totally clear in the afternoon, mostly sunny and 82 degrees for the high temperature. It's 10 degrees above average. And then by tonight, sunsets at 636. You are not going to need the jacket this evening. If you have Saturday night plans, maybe outdoors or with friends, know that it's going to be fairly mild. A high temperature of uh, temperatures rather only near 70 degrees by 10 p.m. OK, let's take a look at tomorrow's future cast. So early tomorrow morning, we're going to be a lot like we were today. So mid to upper 60s for the morning low. One thing to add, though, is that there will be some patchy drizzle out there early tomorrow tomorrow morning, so a bit of a damp start and then we'll hold on to those clouds until the afternoon and then in the afternoon it's going to quickly warm up. Take a look at high temperatures tomorrow too, a couple of degrees warmer around San Antonio, but look down toward Carrizo Springs, Catula out west toward Eagle Pass 90s there for the high temperatures tomorrow. It is going to be a warm, warm day tomorrow for sure. It also is impressive that we're going to see a quick turnaround in the form of a cold front that'll move through Monday morning, and that's going to really knock our temperatures down. Take a look at satellite and radar across the west. We're seeing plenty of snowfall across the Rockies, an active system here and a cold system too. This cold front's going to move through uh, Monday morning. With it is going to be a small chance for a few isolated showers, thunder showers even, the pre-dawn hours of Monday morning. Not enough to help us out with our drought conditions, uh, but it is a small window for some rain. And then it's going to knock our temperatures way down. So we're going to be in the 80s today and tomorrow, but by Monday, temperatures will be falling into the 50s. And even on Tuesday, 40s and 50s. So a cool and even chilly Monday and Tuesday. Then by Wednesday and Thursday, we have a nice nicer days, highs in the 60s and 70s, and then another front will arrive early Friday morning, knocking our temperatures back down and making it windy. So if you have spring break this week, temperatures all over the map. All right, take a look at the seven day forecast. So those chilly days, Monday and Tuesday, there is going to be some dampness around on Tuesday. And as I mentioned, nicer Wednesday and Thursday. That cold front Friday is going to give us a light freeze Saturday morning. So just as a heads up, uh, you may need to bring those plants inside one more time this season. A late season freeze expected Saturday morning, a week from today. Thank you, Sarah. All right, 949, 68 degrees out. It is the start of spring break. We're going to take a look outside with Transguide. Look at the roads. We know a lot of people traveling today, tomorrow. Stay safe out there. All right, and speaking of which, why today is a perfect day to go outside and play, not just because of the weather. We're going to explain right after the break. Good morning. Welcome back and happy Saturday to Saturday. So we have Texas Seeds at 10 a.m. David Elder taking us to a unique cafe. Get this, serving up cookie dough creations. It says edible cookie dough, but in my opinion, cookie dough is always edible. All right, so if that wasn't enough, they're also serving all-you-can-eat pancakes. Whoop. Yeah. Hey, we have our classic syrup for for kids and anyone that wants a regular syrup but my favorite is definitely this buttermilk syrup we've been making this at home for i think over 20 years now and we're bringing it here to the store as well actually i don't even know where it started from but we've been making this for for years and years our kids won't eat pancakes without it these aren't just regular pancakes either, can you tell? That's a sweet cream and buttermilk pancake. I'm very impressed, man, this is cool. That's just a standard stack that you can order, or how do you order them? So we do for our blueberry and the uh, 
banana pecan. They come in a four stack like this. Just the sweet cream pancakes by themselves are all you can eat. You can what? sit here all morning long and eat as many pancakes as you can take. All you can eat pancakes. Just leave it like that. Challenge accepted. All right, March is here and spring is in the air for some of us. And what better timing? Today is National Play Outside Day. I don't know why we're showing a why snowball fight. Snow no video. snow here in San Antonio, <laughs> knock on wood. But being outside, guess what? It delivers a boost to your mental health. And there it is. There it and is. it helps to strengthen immunity, your muscles and your bones. National Outside Day started back in 2011 as a way to get kids off their digital devices and get in touch with Mother Nature. Did you play outside as a kid? Yeah. Always. You needed to. Yeah. I still play outside. Rollerblading. Our producer's like, we're running out of time. You're okay. talking about rollerblading. <laughs> 954, 68 degrees out. Sprucing up your rental properties just in time for spring can be a daunting task. Tomorrow on GMSA, how to get your start on renovations without getting discouraged. All right, one of the most popular boxers today is coming to San Antonio next month. Ryan Garcia headlining the DAZN and Golden Boy promotions, and it's happening in the Dome on April 9th. Tickets now on sale. This is going to be a huge fight for Garcia. He's coming off wrist surgery, but he's also hoping to continue his career after taking a break from the sport last year, dealing with mental health issues. Now, the 23-year-old Garcia has about 9 million followers on his Instagram, and he's hoping to use his popularity and platform to help others with mental health. I think that, you know, it's going to help out a lot of people, the things that I've spoken about and things that I'm coming out with. Uh, I'm coming out with a Snapchat series also revolving around mental health. So... A lot of good is going to come out of it, no matter what I had to endure and hear about, you know, myself and all the opinions put on me and, you know, all the bad stuff, right? Forget about that. There's people telling me I saved their lives. So I think that's way more important than boxing. I, I always tell young fighters, look, if you have something to say, um, if you have something to do, don't don't bottle it in you know speak about it do it go out there you know make the right choices uh talk about the right subjects um look ryan garcia advocating um um about uh, uh, uh mental health is a great thing for him so the more he can talk about it the better it is for him the more of a release it is for him all right, so you can hear more from Garcia and Oscar De La Hoya tomorrow night on Instant Replay, including their thoughts and seeing their colleagues return to Ukraine to fight against the Russians. Instant Replay starts at 11 p.m. right after the night beat. And in the pollen count today, we've got five allergens, but thankfully all of them are low. Molds, oak, ash, pine, and elm. We're seeing a mix of sun and clouds out there around San Antonio, cloudy or across the hill country. It's near 70 degrees around San Antonio, mid 60s up in the hill country. We'll be up to 82 degrees this afternoon for the high temperature, a warm day for us and breezy south winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Similar weather tomorrow with some morning drizzle and afternoon sun 80s as well. But a first our first cold front of the week arrives Monday morning, bringing a small chance for rain, dropping temperatures in the 50s and 60s. We'll warm up slightly Wednesday and Thursday, but a second front arrives Friday morning, making it cool again. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you thank so you, much. Sarah. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Saturday. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Tech Steve is next. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around Central Texas looking for delicious restaurants you won't want to miss. We go inside a new Hill Country brunch spot serving up all-you-can-eat pancakes. All-you-can-eat pancakes. Just leave it like that. And we get a first look inside the new home of this popular noodle house. You can just drink that all day. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, a lot of aromatics that are in there. First destination on today's show is a fried chicken joint located in central San Antonio near North Star Mall. Let's see what's clucking on the menu at Gold Feather Birds and Beers. Gold 
Feather is serving up fried chicken dishes that are Southern favorites with the South Texas twist. I've been here like two or three times already. Everything I've tried has just been excellent. The most popular item on their menu, their churro chicken and waffles. Waffle batter gets poured into a screaming hot waffle iron and gets cooking. Then, three chicken tenders, brined overnight for maximum flavor and texture, get battered in a seasoned flour dredge and buttermilk mixture and tossed into the fryer to finish. When the waffles are ready, they get tossed with a cinnamon and sugar spice blend and the whole plate gets covered in powdered sugar. Get some of your syrup, this is where it's at. chicken and waffles, man, it's so good. The chicken has a really nice flavor to it, and you can tell from that brining process, the flavor goes all throughout. And then on the inside as well, from that buttermilk, nice and creamy, it stays moist. Outside has a nice crunch to it. And then you tackle it there with some of the waffle. Who would have thought? Trudos and fried chicken, they go together hand in hand. This is a killer dish. I like the location, the service is good. Also on the menu, a Nashville hot style chicken sandwich made with Texas toast. Butter gets splashed onto a griddle and the Texas toast gets toasted. A breaded and fried Redbird Farms chicken breast gets dipped in a house made Nashville hot sauce and placed on a bed of garlic aioli and topped with creamy coleslaw and house made pickles. The sandwich is also served up with french fries, get this, drenched in duck fat and covered in Parmesan and parsley. That was probably our third choice of bread before we went to the Texas toast. We're like, well, let's just be different. I mean, we're, we're stuck on a brioche. One week before we opened, we're like, you know what? Texas toast looks fun. It's exciting, so let's try that out. <laughs> That's a good sandwich. <laughs> the crunch on the bread, that is fantastic. They're toasting this thing really nice. Tons of butter. You got three B's of Southern cooking, butter, biscuits, and bacon. They're using a lot of butter on this thing. All that slaw in there is a nice contrast to a lot of that little bit of spicy, oily elements in there. But the pickles have a nice acidity to them that's cutting through some of those fatty flavors as well. It's a really well-balanced bite, but let me tell you, you're not gonna find anything like this at any of your average chicken places, right? This is a very special sandwich. It's really, all, it's all the elements you want. It's fatty, it's a little bit sweet, it's a little spicy and it's gonna fill you up. That's a big sandwich. That's delicious. This new chicken concept is operated by general manager Miguel Mayagüeta, a food and beverage professional looking to bring a fun, dog-friendly chicken joint to the Alamo City. I've always wanted something like this where, where we have craft beer, good food, and then also sports like that, and beer to go. And then family friendly, you know, that's, that's huge for us. Miguel grew up in El Paso and moved to San Antonio seven years ago. He fell in love with the city and knew this is where he wanted to create a future. I let El Paso will always be home. I love El Paso, but it's super green here. And that for me was like, oh, it's so amazing. Gold Feather is also serving up chicken wings tossed in sauces and dry rubs. There are a ton of other options on the menu, including salads, more chicken sandwiches, and of course, craft beer. You guys gotta come check out Goldfeather. It's the new chicken restaurant that's out here in San Antonio. It's at Park North, right by Target. Come check them out. I mean, you can get the chicken and waffles, you can get the chicken sandwiches. They have duck tacos, you got salads. It's a little bit for everyone, but overall, I mean, the food's rocking. This is uh, one of my favorite chicken wing joints that's popping up here in 2020 for San Antonio. Great options. And I love the Trudeau chicken and waffles. This is just awesome. This is a great idea. The Nashville hot though, you can't go wrong. I'm torn, I don't know. Now we're here off Marbach in San Antonio to go inside of a new snack place that's making everything from scratch. Let's go inside Tropicana.
Joining me now is Victoria. She's the restaurant manager out here at Tropicana right here off Marbach Road. And we are super excited because they made everything for us out here. They loaded it up and everything just looks so colorful and so fun. But one of the things that really grabbed my attention about this place is that you're making everything from scratch, including the ice cream, which is huge. And we got this one right here. This is a banana split. Talk to me about why it is important to make the ice cream from scratch. It's important just because it's it's original, the taste, everything about it. Uh, like for example, we have Fruity Pebbles, Snickers, and Gansito. You're not gonna find this anywhere else. You gotta have the, the right flavors in there, the right textures right here. I mean, house made from scratch ice cream. Let me give it a try. Give me some nuts. If you're looking for the freshest ice cream in the Alamo City, you have to come out to Tropicana because this place is making everything from scratch, including all the ice cream inside of their banana split. Fresh bananas, all the different ice creams that you can get in there. It's three different scoops, whatever you want. And then you get all the toppings on there. It's just a really good snack. <laughs> That's good. I think that was the Fruity Pebble. Yes, and you can, it, it, it just hits you like you're eating a bowl of cereal. <laughs> that is good. Now, this is not just the ice cream, though. I mean, you guys have paletas in here in the house. We have a whole tray yes. of them right here. And those are all made from scratch. That's a lot yes. of work. We, we make all of our ice cream and our paletas from scratch. We actually have to stock up um, as we run out. It's not just the ice creams that are made from scratch. It's also their paletas. They have a cool machine in the back that actually lets you make them from scratch. It puts in this really cold liquid. You pull them out, and then you can load them up with whatever you want. The Snickers paletas are hands down like one of the tastiest frozen bites you can get here in San Antonio. This is a fresas con crema, which is a strawberry Ooh. and cream. It's got actual <laughs> strawberries in the paleta. That's <laughs> heavenly. Yeah. Oh, wow. I love the flavor on this. Nice and creamy. The strawberry has a really nice crunch, like a little bite to it, so it has a good texture to it. You can tell, this is just fresh. Yep. I, I love that concept, because you go to a lot of different places here in town that are offering similar items, and they're using like pre-made mm -hmm. items. And so, yes, they're fun to look at, but flavor-wise, you really can't beat what you guys are offering here. And it's not just the sweets, you have the August Frescas as well, so if you want to get yes. a little nice refreshing drink, you have the crazy pineapple. The crazy and then and what, is, what is inside of these? I mean, I see some mango pieces, right? A little bit of everything. Yes. We have jicama, mango, pineapple, watermelon, uh, strawberries, uh, <laughs> cucumber, a little bit of everything. So it's just basically like you guys get everything crazy. you got <laughs> and you just throw it in there. Yes. Hence the name, right? It's yes. the, crazy, the crazy pineapple, the crazy watermelon. Um, but it's not just the sweets out here that's the reason to come out here. Mm -hmm. It's also the savory items as well. And check this one out. This one, this is hot Cheetos, but it's also, you have the corn inside of there yes. as well. This you is, have some crema. This is hot cheese preparados. So uh, what we do is we do the hot Cheetos and then we add the nacho cheese and then we layer on the crema, the mayonnaise, every, anything that you would normally go into <laughs> an elote. Right. Uh, it would be, oh, I just want to get it is in here. And then if you got a lime, you gotta use it, it right. There we go, get a little bit of that action going on. One of the things that sets this place apart from other snack shops is the fact that they're using white corn. A lot of places are using yellow corn, but if you wanna be authentic, it's gotta be white. In front of us now, we have two different items. We have one that's the Megonada, right? Yes. And then you have this one, strawberries and cream. This one is like one of my favorite items to get. It's so simple. But the way y'all are making these items out here are different than any other place. Because mm -hmm. usually it's like it's, it's like a, an ice that gets put in here, like a flavored ice. But y'all are using ice cream, right? Yes, our very own ice cream. We make it here. This place <laughs> is a sinful, decadent place. It's where you want to go when you want to get your savory snacks, your sweet snacks. Victoria, thank you so much for having us out here. You guys, Tropicana right here off Marbach. Grand opening coming soon. We got the information on the bottom of the screen. Right now they're in their soft opening. You can come out here with the family, enjoy yourselves. And you know, there's social distancing in here as well. There's little places to eat outside. This is the spot. Everything's, and that's the biggest thing, everything made from scratch, including the Snickers Paleta, which I highly recommend, the avocado ice cream. It just keeps getting better and better. Now I'm gonna dive into this one. Thank you so much. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we go inside a new Hill Country brunch spot serving up all-you-can-eat pancakes. All-you-can-eat pancakes. Just leave it like that. 
And next, we go inside a Riverside brewery serving up brunch and brews. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. <laughs> 